Hi, I'm Stephanie, and I want to welcome you to Mission TV Live. Tonight, we're going to be talking about a topic that really applies to all of us, and that's Laodicea. So join me on the show, and we're going to find out the solution. Hello and welcome to the Mission TV Live. I, I know Stephanie just welcomed you, but I can't resist welcoming you again. And you know, we're just so happy to have the opportunity to come together this evening and talk about a topic that I think is a challenge for all of us, but God has the solution. And I wanna start off with a text and then I'll share something else with you real quick. And that is in Revelation chapter three and verse 21. To him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Isn't this what we all want? We want to know how it is that we can be with God in the, in the eternal future. And so our topic this evening is overcoming Laodicea. And we wanna talk about some various things that we see in this. And we have, um, I have John and Stephanie on the set with me this evening, and also Melissa Summers, who you might recognize. You've probably seen her on Mission TV before. She used to work with us a while ago when we first started, and Melissa hosted a lot of the shows. Yeah. And then she left us for a while, and she's still, you know, she's working part-time with us, helping us. So we really appreciate Melissa and uh, the opportunity to have her on with us this evening. And also, I want to invite you to call for our free offer, tonight we have the book, Why, I, Why Am I a Missionary? Why Should You Be a Missionary? by Jonathan Dietrich, who is a missionary in Africa with his wife, and I think they have a son, right? Mm. A small, small boy. So it's a very interesting book. It talks about a lot of aspects of missionary work and how the Lord led Jonathan in his path to be a missionary and the things he learned about Christ along the way. It's just, there's a lot of beauty in this book. So I'd like to invite you to call 423-413-7321 to receive a free copy of this book. Also, anytime during the show, please call, email, Facebook, or Twitter us your questions or your comments. We don't mind. We love it, actually. Our phone number again is 423-413-7321. The email address is live at missiontv.com. Facebook is Mission TV Live. And Twitter is Mission TV underscore com. So any of those ways. And if you call, you don't have to be live, although we'd like to talk to you. You can just leave your question with the operator and she will pass it forward to us. So please participate in the show this evening. We would just love to have your input. Thank you. It's so nice to have everybody here this evening. Yeah. This yeah. <laughs> Hey, Melissa. Nice. <laughs> I'll see you got two Nicholas now. Uh, You're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think we are. <laughs> but, you know, our topic this evening is challenging to us because so many times we talk about Laodicea in the church. It's like we know we're Laodicean. We've always known this thing. And, but we don't talk about overcoming it. I was thinking about that today. It's like, how many times do we hear about overcoming? You know, it's kind of this, but, it's just not addressed. Yeah, but almost. a lot of times, what is it that we're overcoming? If we don't realize that we are Laodicea, mm -hmm. then we don't see a need to overcome. It's right. almost like that's part of the condition of being Laodicea and you don't realize. That realize. But of course, we all, we've been indoctrinated that we are Laodicea, but I don't think people maybe know what that means. And if you don't know what it is, how can you know what mm -hmm. to um, overcome? Yeah, yeah. I, I know I grew up in the church. I grew up born and bred and self-trained, Laodicean. <laughs> I tried everything I could not to look different. Yeah. And so it's like this, this miasma, this, this you know, cultural uh, inherited thing that it's like it kind of holds you down and, and you think in your brain certain ways mm -hmm. that just kind of binds you into that. Mm -hmm. And so this idea of overcoming Laodicea, and I love the fact that you put the promise in the, in the beginning mm. because... Evidently, according to that verse, Christ overcame Laodicea. Right. 
Right, and we have a reason. We have a reason and we have a help. Mm. Because he says, even as I also overcame. So he's our example. Right. Yeah. Right. So it is possible to get out of Laodicea. Mm -hmm. And of course that makes sense because he's our mm -hmm. example in everything. Mm -hmm. And he's also been tempted in every point as us. So that would make sense that he's been tempted with Laodiceanness. <laughs> 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 the state of Laodicea. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of funny though to me in the church that it's like we don't realize what is involved with being Laodicean, but we know we are. You right. know, we're like, we almost, it's almost it's like almost, we should get t-shirts like it's the Laodicea like a badge Club. Of honor or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah, that's scary to me, yeah. the badge of glory kind of. Exactly. Well, idea. it's almost just kind yeah. of like, oh, well, that's who we are. We can't help it kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. maybe that's part of it. But you know, a problem too is, is, you know, when you think of Jesus as being the example, a lot of people look at, I mean, there's this great argument whether he's in the, oh, he came in the sinful nature or, you know, the, the, what is it? What's the, the word? Un, unsinful nature. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, and I think understanding the true nature of Christ, which is a whole huge Different argument. Study. Mm -hmm. Ex exactly. But if we understand that, like you said, he overcame as we overcame. Yes. But if he was in a position where he could not sin right. or he didn't have the nature to sin, then it's, then it's that not separation. a fair, right? Yeah. It wouldn't be a fair thing. But so he's not really our example because there's no way we could start like he did. Exactly. Right. And I know you the know. argument isn't isn't about the nature of Christ, right. but if you don't understand the true biblical basis of mm -hmm. his true nature, mm -hmm. then this verse that we read in Revelation wouldn't mean anything. Right. Right. Because he did overcome. He had the same propensities yes. that we had. Yes. Yeah. He doesn't have an advantage over us as far as that goes. Right. You know? And in fact, he had a greater disadvantage yes. because just as much as we are sinful in our nature, mm -hmm. he had double natures. He had, mm -hmm. you know, the, he was divine, but he was also human. Mm -hmm. So he was 100% divine that he had to suppress. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then he was 100 human who had all of these propensities and tendencies. And that, mm. I mean, that's a bigger temptation than any of us can experience yeah. because we can't be tempted to use supernatural powers <laughs> right. because we don't have them. But someone compared it to, to trying to, um, I don't know, some sort of container or something that would float. Mm -hmm. trying to like put it, push it underwater, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like he was trying to, he had to suppress his um, supernatural Maybe. powers mm -hmm. often, right. you know, except for the appropriate times. I don't have the temptation to turn stone into bread. Exactly. Right. That's right. Not, exactly. not a problem for me. Mm -hmm. And I never sinned in that way. Yeah, but I mean, you think <laughs> about it when he was, I mean, in his destitute, when, you know, his humanity was, was at a point where his heart was breaking and he was mm -hmm. literally dying from a broken heart. He, what, what, I mean, what power was that to hold back that divinity yeah. to not just stop this? Say this exactly. is enough. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, he surrendered to it and said, nevertheless, Lord, you know, not my will, but thy will mm -hmm. be done. Right. Now that's overcoming. Yeah. And that's our example. So if we can figure out his his way technique mm -hmm. so, so to speak or his habit then that will happen with us also mm. and so that's what's so beautiful about this but we have if Christ says I want you to overcome this mm. that means it's possible that means it's possible yes and if he thinks it's possible he would have given us a prescription a way to do it mm. and it would have been found in the Bible okay so we're going to find that tonight but we want to kind of look at what is the message. Mm -hmm. And we all know this very well, but I want to emphasize the last word here. I know thy works. Okay? So he's not talking about our experience or our, he's not talking about our, um, our, our profession, mm -hmm. you know, mm. or where our names what are written. Say. Yeah, if we're on the church books. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about works. Okay? And a lot of people, and, and that's one of the big hot oh. topics. I You're know that we deal with a lot. Into heaven Legalism. And, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly, you know, bad work, uh, good works has gotten a bad rap. And, but his, he's talking about our works, okay? Mm -hmm. Thou art neither cold nor hot. I, would, I wish you were cold or hot. Mm. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So what's interesting is if you go back to the original um, city of Laodicea, they had two water sources. 
and one was cold, and mm -hmm. one was hot. And they would combine, and they would get this lukewarm, you know, it's not hot enough to take a bath, but it's not cold enough to drink. So and it so was useless. It was kind of, yeah, nice. and it would had this kind of sickly, limey flavor to it. So they would, a lot of people would want to spit it out of their mouths. And so Christ is, mm -hmm. is, is, is likening us, and I'm thinking that we must have some hot in us and yeah. some cold. Hmm. Combined mm -hmm. to make this lukewarm state, state. And we can look at this. Mm. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Okay. So we think we're okay. That's we the issue. We think we have what we need and we think we're okay. Even spiritually, we think we're okay. Because we're rich. We're rich spiritually. Well, yeah, ultimately that's the main thing he talks about is spiritual, but he applies it in... Well, physical also. You know, right. But, the, I mean, we've got the, the Ten Commandments. We've got that understanding. We've got the Bible. We've got Ellen White. We've got all this stuff. We're rich spiritually. We've got a lot of knowledge about what is right theology. Mm -hmm. So we have an intellectual knowledge without an experiential knowledge. Exactly. Without having that experience. Right. Hmm. Exactly. Can I interrupt? Absolutely. <laughs> um, I was thinking about the, the thing with the hot and cold sources. And when mm -hmm. you said that means that we, if we're lu lukewarm, that means that we must have some hot and some cold. Mm -hmm. Well, it just made me think, obviously, God is the source of hot, I would mm -hmm. say, and Satan would be the source of cold. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a scary thought to think that we do have both of those things in us, you know, if we're lukewarm. Mm -hmm. And, oh, man, my thought was even going to get better. And then... What? But that's perfect, though, because mm -hmm. what you're saying, that is a perfect example of the great controversy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the, that battle against good and evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's not a light matter mm -hmm. that we're lukewarm. Like, if mm -hmm. you take it back and realize the sources, mm -hmm. I mean, it's good that we have the hot, but, you know... Mm -hmm. We also have the cold. Right. Right. And it's bad because the New Agers feel that good, bad, hot, cold coincide you know, uniformly you have together. You to have both. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, wow. Right. right. So that's the difference between, or the, what is it, Satan, his, his, his lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, he makes people believe, oh, you know, it's normal, you have both. And the mm -hmm. Lord is saying, no, you have one or the mm -hmm. other. Right. Tonight we're going to find out a little bit about what God may see as the cold the source of the cold hmm. okay, mm -hmm. in our study as we go through. Oh. We've got a lot of stuff that cool. we're going to check out here. Um, but this is what he says. I cancel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, that the shame of thy nakedness do not, not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Now, I believe that he's put this in a reverse order. Mm. Because we need, we need that eye salve to see our conditions so that we will desire the gold and the white raiment and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of interesting. He kind of puts it in the same order that he put it in the previous verse where he said what we have. He mm -hmm. said you're rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. Mm -hmm. And so he's talking about that you may be rich mm -hmm. and that you may have, you know, right. you know clothes and... Anyway, yeah. so it's kind of almost the same order as he put it in the first verse. What's beautiful mm -hmm. about this is that even though it's one of the most damning statements or judgments of a people, it's like mm -hmm. he keeps putting these, it can change. Mm -hmm. uh, it can change. He laces it with hope. Yeah. He lines it. Yeah, so here mm -hmm. we have, I mean, right off, he says, this is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there is hope. It can change. But the question is, what does this actually mean? I mean, buy of God gold, tried in the fire. What is that? Anybody know? <laughs> well, I think, um, I think you can probably explain it better than I can. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it has to do with our, the perfection of our characters. Because mm -hmm. mm. we know that trials in James it talks about how the trials purify us yes yeah. as a matter of fact he says the trial of your faith right. though right. it be tried with fire um, and that's that's the faith the gold is the faith which works by love mm. so love and faith and this is something that we can buy of God and I've often thought about what does it mean to buy 
something from God. Hmm. And um, it's how like, can we buy something from God? Exactly. Mm-hmm. He says it's, in the Old Testament, he says, buy, buy without money mm-hmm. and without price. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder why so, it uses that word, buy. There is an exchange, though. I believe that there is an exchange. And I don't want to get mm. off topic, but the, the only guy in, that Jesus met, not the only, but a guy that most meets this criteria that Jesus met in his ministry is the rich young ruler. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. So there was an exchange there, wasn't there? He yeah. was asking him to make an exchange. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. Give up what he has. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sell what you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure, treasure. in heaven. Mm-hmm. And come, and come and follow, and follow me. me. When he gave up everything that he had, everything that gave him security, he bought into faith, Mm -hmm. living by faith. Give up your permanent address. Come and follow me. Mm -hmm. Become a nomad like I do. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. what Christ is saying. And so we keep going. But unfortunately, he didn't choose that. Yeah. Mm. As many as, and I don't want to be, I don't want to walk away sad. As many as I love, I rebuke (laughs) and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. In other words, change. Mm Mm-hmm. Take a hold of this and make the choice yourself. It's not just a kind of a, okay, I'm going to make a change. It's a, let's change. Let's do something about this. That's Mm -hmm. one of the key problems with the Laodicea is lack of zeal. (laughs) I mean, I don't know if you've experienced that. Well, otherwise he wouldn't say be zealous. Never Never experienced that lack of zeal. (laughs) Especially at 9.15 Sabbath morning. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we yeah, won't go there. Yes, that, that that one is that's that's deep. Mm. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Mm. A lot of people, and we were talking about that earlier with the prosperity message. Mm-hmm. You know, if if you really have the Lord and you're working, you should be prospering, and that this should be happening, and that mm. should be happening. And mm. what stays in my mind is, you know, Sister White and her her. Um, narrow way mm. vision. Mm-hmm. Mm. And she said, those who do not allow themselves to suffer hardship and privation mm. will not make it. Wow. Mm. She said, will not make it. That's wow. intense. So if, we, yeah, so if, if we're not allowing ourselves to surrender and let the Lord take what he needs to take mm. from us mm-hmm. to do through us what he mm. needs to, mm-hmm. we're not going to have that experience. Right. And my mind is thinking about, okay, how do people feel that they're getting ready mm-hmm. for the Lord's coming? Mm-hmm. And we talk about, oh, there's going to be a time mm-hmm. we can't buy and sell. Praise the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. And, you know, we say all of this and we really mean it, but it's like, what are we doing for others to make mm-hmm. them know and mm-hmm. be prepared? Mm-hmm. And we don't really realize we're not prepared mm-hmm. right. because there are things that are going to happen that are, in a sense, God's way of chastening and rebuking us and right. to get us in a character perfection to where we will not be a risk in heaven to go back. Right. That's going to be an experience. Yeah, that's a, a very interesting that you put character development and helping others and letting God take away the things that will keep you from, from this experience. And we're going to look at that. This is actually the Bible study that's going to come out. So mm. we're, okay, so here's Christ at the very end. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, Okay, this is really tender. It is beautiful. Mm. I will come in and I will Mm. sup. Sup, I've never had anybody sup with me, but I think that means eat dinner with me. That's what I think. We'll go out to eat. (laughs) No, we'll come in to eat. Okay, well, I hope he's cooking because I'm not a very good cook. But but we'll hang out together. Mm. We'll spend this time together. And I think that's incredibly key to what we're looking at tonight, to overcoming He's, he's already standing there. He's mm-hmm. already knocking. Yeah. And yeah. then he's going to be personal. You yeah. come into people's personal space to eat with them, break bread. That's, exactly. That's a socialization thing. And this is part of the overcoming. Okay, this is part of the key to overcoming Laodicea is to allow Christ into our hearts and spend time with him. Christ like within, the hope of glory. Exactly. Mm. This, is this, this is the 1888 message here. Righteous by faith. It's interesting that the previous verse, right before that, said, Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Mm. And then he says, Behold, I'm standing at the door and knocking. Mm-hmm. So it's like he's saying this, Be, be zealous, you know, live for something. Mm-hmm. You know, repent of this illness that you have. Right. And I'm here. And mm. I've been knocking. Mm-hmm. Right. If you can listen to me, if you can hear my voice, open it, and I'll come in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Well, and the crazy thing is, is those people, the Laodicean people, are the last church group before Christ comes back. So it's the most vital time mm-hmm. for people to be awake to what is happening. Mm-hmm. But it only makes sense that Satan would be trying to like tranquilize everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's fine. Exactly. <laughs> Just go to sleep. Exactly. It's okay. Just, yeah. Don't get excited. Yeah. yeah. Like he just, um, I think in one of our earlier meetings, I kind of realized, wow, it's kind of like peace, peace. Yeah. And I think we've heard that in relation to that there will be wars and rumors of wars mm-hmm. and that the nations are saying peace, peace. Mm-hmm. But I think maybe that applies to within the church. Absolutely. Maybe even more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> peace, peace. We're in our happy little bubble. And do you realize how subtle that this is happening? It's not overtly. It's mm. very subtle. You know, Facebook and Twitter. And I was seeing on the news now where instead of, you know, families having to go to prison to visit their families, having to go is how they put it. Mm. They can have a face-to-face on the computer. Mm. So mm. now he's getting us all self uh, trying to, let me put it that way, yeah. absorb, self-absorbed in all of these social mediums mm-hmm. instead of, what to say, you have, you have in Facebook instead of your, book, your face in his book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but all of these are like subtle, you know, so it's not anything overt to lull us, lull us to sleep. What's mm-hmm. the word? <laughs> anyway, yeah. to rock mm-hmm. us to sleep, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But it's these little things. I mean, how yeah. long do we sit there at a computer and just kind of dole out you know, we don't do TV like we used to, mm. but now we're doing the computer. Yeah. We'll and we're still watching hours. TV on the computer. <laughs> it's not that we're not utilizing Hollywood, you know. Yeah, right, right, <laughs> you know, right. Vimeo and all of yeah. these others. But, yeah. and he's still at the door knocking. Yeah. And we're not. here. We can hear him above mm. the call, above the texts, above if we oh, can wow. hear him. Yeah. Roll over in the morning. What's the first thing we grab? Check our Facebook account. <laughs> Email or check the Bible. That's one of the biggest wow. challenges in my life mm-hmm. is just that. Um, to him that overcometh. Mm-hmm. So God believes that we can overcome. Will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame? And this is what my wife read early uh, at the beginning. And I'm set down with my father in his throne. So someone has been successful. Someone has been successful in this overcoming. So if that's the case, we have somebody that's gone before us and it's possible for us to do it. But does God in any other place in the Bible talk about how to overcome? What are the issues to overcome? And I like to call this the physician's prescription (laughs) as we got a disease, Laodicean disease, and we're going to start to overcome. And I found in my personal study that these two in the Old Testament are prophecies designed especially for us today. Mm. Malachi 3 and Isaiah 58. And we're going to go to Malachi 3 first. And this is why I think Malachi 3 is so incredibly important for today is because right here in verse, verse 1, chapter th- Malachi 3, 1, an event happens that has taken place that we're very familiar with as Adventists. Behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek. Now who's that? Who are we seeking? Yeah, that's Jesus. Mm -hmm. Shall suddenly come to his temple. Hey, when did that happen? Suddenly come to... 1844. 1844. Mm -hmm. So this is a day of atonement Mm -hmm. message. And as we read, we see no break. There's no break, okay? He just keeps on going. He comes to the temple, whom you delight saith the Lord of hosts. And then he keeps going and he says, but who may abide the day of his coming? Now now he's talking about when Jesus comes there, Mm -hmm. the day of atonement. Who will abide this? Who will stand during Mm -hmm. the day of atonement? And who's, he is like, this is what he's going to do. Okay, he's coming, he's got a job to do and this is what he's going to do. He's like a refiner's fire, like fuller soap and he shall sit as a refiner and purify of silver Okay, so he's putting the silver in the heat and Mm. he shall purify the sons of Levi. So it's not just gold, Mm -hmm. it's the believers. Mm -hmm. It's people. It's people. It's you and me. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so, and purge them as gold and silver. Why? So that they can offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness, right doing, Mm -hmm. do good works. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
So this is all in, this, in the context of the Day of Atonement. So it's specifically for us today. And you know what? Just what we were talking about, uh -huh. he shall purify the sons of Levi. Levi mm -hmm. were what? The priests, the mm -hmm. ones that, you know, we represent, yes. you know, God's last day people to get the message to mm -hmm. the world. Yes. We represent them. Yes. He will purge them as gold and silver. Purging. What does it take to purge? So all of these mm -hmm. challenges mm -hmm. that we're facing, if you talk to people all over everywhere that are trying to live a righteous life mm -hmm. are suffering something mm -hmm. in their families, whether it's the children, your husband, you know, school, mm -hmm. whatever it is. I mean, this is what it's saying. Mm -hmm. We're in, you know, the time of judgment mm -hmm. and we're going to experience this just before the close of probation. Right. And because it's for it's, good. Right. It's right. purifying us. So, mm -hmm. and I just keep going through this because for me personally, I I almost got to a point where I'm like, okay, Lord, why does all this stuff keep happening to me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like, bam, bam, bam. I mean, mm -hmm. 2011, a tornado literally flew my house, mm -hmm. blew it away. And, and landed on top of your car. <laughs> mm -hmm. On top of the car. <laughs> Before that, husband divorced me. Um, the same month, lost the house. A few months later, told of the car. Just three weeks ago, burglarized. I'm like, it's... I, I even said it was at a point where it's almost embarrassing. Mm. But reading this is so encouraging yes. because the Lord There's knows. Yes, and yes. he knows my weaknesses, but he also knows our heart. Yes. He knows mm. our desires, but he also knows our willingness mm -hmm. yes. if we allow him to purge. Yes. Right, and he also knows what we can bear. Yes. That's right. That's you know, right. He's not going to purge press us, and press press and us press. harder than we can take it. Yeah. yeah. I had a friend yeah. that his house burned down. Beautiful, big house. And somebody else came to him and says, wow, you are so honored for the Lord to allow that to happen to you. He must trust you a lot. <laughs> wow. wow. It's a total different way of looking it's at it. Totally different perspective yeah. than what most people come from. Right. And, and, and it's Paul said, I think it's Paul says that he chasteneth uh, uh, his son like a, a father chastens just... a son that he loves. Mm. Okay. So if I didn't care about my son, I'd let him go wander the streets. I would never bother. It's like, I don't want to take the time and bother and pain to yeah. spank the boy. Mm -hmm. If I care about him, then I'm going to do what I'm it gonna takes. I'm going to do what it takes so that he will have a life that he can be proud and of. And will be saved. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Talk about waking up asleep in church. Right. It's <laughs> trials. The trials of our faith work with patience. Mm -hmm. Let patience have its perfect Work. But we do, as humans, as humans, human nature, we, we do everything we can to avoid trials. We get insurance. <laughs> you know, we get a better car. We do all this stuff. We have a, I mean, we try to, I mean, I, I, I've, I was trained to take care of yourself, take care of your family. Don't ever allow you, yourself to get into a spot that you can't get out of. So is that kind of self-sufficiency? Wow. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yes. Absolutely. And this is the problem that God has with people. Remember, he says, all we like sheep have gone, gone astray. astray. We have all gone and started Returned. murdering people and started mm -hmm. doing adult. It doesn't say that. We're just doing our We've own all thing. We've gone our own way. Wow. Just, so, mm, just we, doing our own thing. We typically focus on, oh, shooting, killing, stealing, and all That's of that. Bad. And he's like, you know, check your attitude. Where's <laughs> your character? How do you love one another? Right. Right, and are you taking Are you care? following me? Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to pause for a moment okay. and invite our viewers to call us at 423-413-7321, to email us at live at missiontv.com, to send us on Facebook at Mission TV Live, or on Twitter at Mission TV underscore com. Any of those ways, we would love to have your comments or your questions. We'd like to have you a part of the discussion this evening. So please feel free to participate in the show in that way. And it's just, it's so neat when we hear from our viewers. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, we love to have them enter into the discussion. Yeah. But I love this where it says offer an offering in righteousness. I love mm -hmm. that concept. It sounds yeah. so holy Lord. and so wonderful that God, this is what they God is seeking. Offer unto them. Mm -hmm. An offering, right. and it reminds me of the living sacrifice, mm. becoming a living sacrifice. And there's things that are binding us away from giving him that living sacrifice, mm -hmm. that offering in righteousness. And really, if we are going to be doing righteousness, that's only because Christ is living in us. Mm -hmm. and the way he did it. 
Exactly. And then doing it is actually being it. Yeah. Because I think a lot of times we try to do mm. right things, but we aren't righteous. Yeah. Because it's our heart. God looks on. He's not living in us. Right. So we're trying to do it in our own strength. Right. And then we're outward. Yes. Man looks on the outward. God mm. looks on the heart. Yes. So righteousness is being righteous. Mm. If you have him and you are righteous, then you automatically are going to do righteous. Right. Mm. So what if, what if he's trying to purge this stuff out so he can come in mm. and then he can live his life through us? I mean, then, then you would be able to offer offerings in righteousness. You would be zealous. You would have the character mm. perfect, uh, of God. And he would be dwelling in you and supping with you. There you go. So really, mm -hmm. it sounds like the problem with Laodicea is that we, speaking generally, mm -hmm. don't actually have Christ living in us. Because other things... We have doctrine mm -hmm. and different things in our minds, but the riches of the world are in our heart instead of Christ. Mm-hmm. Yes, 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 yes. This is once we start getting some of these concepts, you you will see Old Testament and New Testament passages just explode in color. Mm. It's just really come out. And this is a, we're starting to get into a theme here that is just deep. Okay, so let's keep going. Now Jesus, what he does? Okay, he's going to purify. He's going to purge. Okay, so the first thing he does is spend one a couple verses, just saying, "I'm going to." be judges against. I'm going to be a swift witness against. So he's not going to work with these people. Mm -hmm. He's going to witness against them. So they're mm. going to be like cut off. Okay? So he says, I'm not even going to work with the sorcerers, the adulterers, all these things. Da, 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 da. Um, for I am the Lord, I change not, therefore the ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. These are the people God's going to work with. Mm. He says, even and, from, I mean, the, and he's the leftover. Huh? reminding us of his patience. Right, absolutely. Wow. Well, because if he was not, I mean, if he was changeable, then pff, he'd yeah. be gone. Mm -hmm. if, I think if he if he was if he was governed by his emotions. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, but he's not. Yes. Yeah. But even uh, now, God's going to talk. He's going to spend a few verses. I think five verses on this one issue that's coming up. Mm -hmm. Remember, this is a Day of Atonement issue. David Tolman thing, and he's purging us. Mm -hmm. So what is the issue that's so important to him that he wants to purge us from? Okay? It says, Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from my teachings, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. So God says, change. Mm -hmm. Same pattern. Okay? Laodicean message, it can change. Here, it can change. You can change. What it, but you said, wherein shall we return? Like, what's the problem, Lord? Everything is fine. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with us. Yeah, mm. what's your problem? You know, <laughs> everything's good down here. Mm. Our relationship is going well. I don't yeah, know why I you're go upset. to church every Sabbath. Mm. You know, yeah. Exactly. This is a, this <laughs> Boy, is a I'm on the prayer line on the You're the touching phone. that. I don't go to prayer meeting, but I'm on the prayer <laughs> <Yeah>. line. <laughs> All five of them. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, a lot of people don't go to prayer meeting anymore. No, they, I'm telling you, they have these prayer line things. I mean, let me, okay, I won't start. <laughs> they have them like at 5, 5.30 in the morning. And literally, I'm like, you know what? I'm sure it's wonderful, it's blessed. Mm. But what time am I going to have mm. to spend with the Lord myself? Mm. So you see how, anyway, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, get on okay, soapbox. Box, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but well, we did have a comment from a viewer I'd just like to read real beautiful. quick, and then you can yes. continue. And this is from... Someone named Sharon. She says, when the person in the parable found the pearl of great price, mm. he sold all that he mm. had to buy the pearl. Overcoming Laodicea will require all that we have. Yeah. There is no halfway cure. Are we willing to do that? Mm. Well, I know I, I, I'm not willing. I want to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to do we that. We have to. Not just we have to, but I want to. I mean, it's, yeah. it's like what, is, what it's doing is it's freeing myself from these bonds, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from the bond of comfort from the bond of self. And it's freeing myself to do what is going to bring him the greatest joy. And when he gets the greatest joy, I get the greatest joy. Mm -hmm. And I can then bring her the greatest joy and mm -hmm. my kids the greatest joy, mm -hmm. not just for now, mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this attitude though, wherein shall we return? It's like, what's the, this is a Laodicean attitude. <laughs> Rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing, including God. Hmm. 
Okay. That's so true. I mean, I that's think really we've sad. Got a phone call. Really? Yes. Let's go there. Excuse me. Hello, welcome to Mission TV Live. Uh, yes, yeah, my, my name is Brent Stone. I am. I'm from Korea, 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 and I, have, um, I want to comment on, on overcoming Leo Yeah. You know, for myself, myself I've discovered it. You know, it's about a daily uh, consistency, being consistent in having a basic devotion daily. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right, yeah, well, thank you. Good. Thank you so much for your comment. I think we lost him. Oh, he's calling all the way from Korea. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. Well, God bless you. Thank you for your comment. Yeah. yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you. I, I really appreciate the program. All Praise right. the Lord. Thank well, you for God your bless you. Thank you for calling. That's really cool. So, Could you repeat yeah. his comment? He said he's, he finds himself has, having an easier time overcoming when he does spend that time. Yes. And he has the personal devotion. So he's mm -hmm. tying in with that come in and sup with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's that time spent with him that it's like the spirit of Christ yeah. mm -hmm. comes in and it begins yeah. to do that mm -hmm. work. So and you know, beautiful comment. Actually. And it's impossible to do it without that. It's, mm. it's that, mm. because think about it, Christ as the example. Right, I was thinking early, about that. Early, early in the morning, <laughs> yes. late at night, it didn't matter what he did all, all day. All night. Right, he would take yes. that time with yes. the Father, mm -hmm. preparing himself for whatever his work mm -hmm. was for the next day. Yes. And, and I mean, I, I can only talk of myself personally. Yeah. I have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. And when mm -hmm. I neglect my yes. devotion with the Lord, my life reflects it. Exactly. Yeah. You know, different struggles that I have, my exactly. willpower is no match for it. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Because self is all in the way and I don't have that Christ within, right. you know, to fight my battle and stand for me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so what was that man's name? Brent or Brett? Something like that. I'm hoping they wrote it down in there yeah, and got an email I appreciate him calling in. And yeah. That's really good. It adds to the discussion. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, anybody can call in. Yeah, yeah so. we appreciate it. <laughs> it's fun. And the encouragement <laughs> also. We're callers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, here we have a Laodicean state. And then God starts zeroing in on the issue mm. that he wants to purge Laodicea, the... Day of Atonement people from. It says, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? Again, they ask and the he same says, question. What's wrong with us? In mm -hmm. tithes and offerings. Mm. This is the issue. Mm -hmm. This is the issue it's money. today. Exactly. It's your, it's your tithes and offerings. You're not giving a faithful tithe and offering. And we think, well, okay, that's just one little thing, a little checkbox that I have to, do, to, to check off. But this is hitting the heart of the problem that we have in Laodicea. You're rich and increased with goods, and you're keeping back your tithes and offerings. And you know what, John, people would want to argue that. You know, how could it be my tithe and offering? Mm. But it's the absolute next verse. So it's in the exact same context yes. of everything else. So it has to be yes. what he's talking about. Mm. This is it's, it's part of that section that goes all the way to verse 12. God starts talking, and it just keeps on moving right on through. Mm -hmm. And at the end it says, I, the Lord of hosts, have spoken it. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is part of it. This is the issue that God has. And I believe that this is a solution to help us get out of the state of Laodicea. Mm -hmm. Okay, to break the bond, bond of covetousness. Mm -hmm. Okay, world, the world, okay? To, to get us away from the greediness. In tithes and offerings, ye are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation, or we could say this whole church. Hmm. Okay, you, have, you are cursed with a curse. How, how could we be cursed? We're the chosen. We're the, we're the, the end time final church. Well, you look at... We have the truth. How many... <laughs> what's, our, what's our retention rate Sorry. of our youth? I don't know, but it's oh, not very my. high. <laughs> yeah, it's like... One out of three. Twenty-eight percent. Twenty-eight percent. But no, John, it's because God. it's because of the music. You know, the, it's not drawing. The music's the, so we need, yeah, we need to bring liven up the music and. <laughs> That's not do, from God. Where do is that? Flips and jumps and and poop and where, where does God say that in the Bible? This is what I'm seeing in the Bible. Mm -hmm. This is what God's saying in the Bible. Mm -hmm. This is the issue. Now, when the parents, you know, have this attitude. 
of keeping the money back from God's mm. work, then that takes away the importance. No matter what they say, no matter what school they send their kids to, the example is that this is not that important. What's really mm. important is to have a good car, to have a good job, to have a good mm. house, all this kind of stuff. Life. So though our lips are saying one thing, mm -hmm. our actions are saying another, exactly. and the young people are seeing and learning from the actions mm -hmm. versus the words. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They're seeing that you say that you love God and He's supreme, but I see you pursuing a good life in the world, and that's what I see, and I can pursue the world a lot better outside the church than inside the church. Mm -hmm. So do you think that they're perceiving them as hypocrites? Absolutely. And doesn't want a part of that? Well, actually, we have a young person with us. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> this young person was thinking. <laughs> That's great. Okay, okay, yes. Think, think. <laughs> it was in relation to what we were saying, but I zoned out on the question. What was the So do you see us as, as, as hypocrites, the older generation? They're saying that God is so important to us, but we're putting all our focus and everything on getting it. Right, a right. Yeah, I was just, um, I was actually thinking about um, how I think parents really do affect the way their children turn out. I mean, <laughs> wow. That's kind of like a yes. no-brainer statement. Right. But um, I think a lot of young people are lacking that spirituality because their parents have allowed um, certain things. Mm -hmm. They have not been disciplined in their own lives. Mm -hmm. And so the parents may not even understand why or mm -hmm. whatever, but I think a lot of times... Um, wow. You know, it comes down to, you know, if I ha ever have children, you know, it's going to come down to my own relationship with God and my own self-discipline, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. I think, I, I remember um, thinking about this before, and I think there's a lot to do with in the world, but not of the world. Mm -hmm. And we don't communicate that to our children. You know, many times it's like Christianity is just something you do either by yourself mm -hmm. when your kids aren't seeing what you're doing or on Sabbath when you go to church mm -hmm. or, you know, something like that. It's not something that pervades your entire life and is the overruling, exactly. overarching, that you know, life mm -hmm. it's direction. Not, it's not mm -hmm. the main thing that, I mean, that's not the reason you choose a career. Right, it's not the reason I choose mm -hmm. a career. It's not a, the reason I choose a house. It's not the reason I choose a job. It's not the reason I choose anything. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the reason that I choose what I choose is because I want to or it's going to get me more money so I can do what I want to or, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. We choose what we want, what we're comfortable with mm -hmm. and what's going to make us comfortable. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we do as opposed to something that we are. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, it, it, it's not only what we do. It's just that our stated values don't affect our actions. We state that Christ is coming soon, mm -hmm. but our actions look like it's going to be after mm -hmm. we die because mm -hmm. we're setting up our, our retirement account and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So there's that dis dichotomy that, that I think the younger generation yeah. picks up just like that. Mm -hmm. And it's a trend. Okay? Wow. Um, yeah, we don't have a is, lot of time left, so we need to... Yeah. <laughs> this, this, okay, the reason I got into Malachi 3 is that I found, and we, we, it's the tithe chapter, bring ye all the tithes into the, the storehouse and see that I will, you know. But I found Mrs. White had that in the middle of an impassioned appeal for foreign mission offering. Hmm. So she's not only, I mean, it's not only talking about the tithe, but it's the offering with which God's kingdom can advance. Mm -hmm. and, and a few years ago, I went back and I did the study about how long has world missions been on the decline, giving to world missions been on the decline. Oh, and it's wow. 70 years. Over 60 years, like 70 years, that, it, that giving to foreign missions has been on the decline. Now, if, this is where I get really passionate because Jesus, God says, the issue that I have with the Day of Atonement Church, which is us, is tithes and offerings. And you look at the chart. Wow. Can you see what the issue that he would have with us would be? <laughs> I mean, God's children on the other side of the world in India, in Africa, in Sri Lanka, all these places, don't know the gospel, don't have any access to it. There's poverty, kid, you know, 16,000 kids dying every day. God has to witness each one of them die. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, you're not even given. You're not even given a, a fraction of what you could. Mm -hmm. 
This is Laodicea, mm -hmm. where we can give to tithe. Tithe is something we have to do because we know that's like the 11th commandment. But even commandment. that, even that, not all the church members are giving a 10% tithe. I, mm -hmm. I'm told that maybe a third of our church members mm -hmm. are giving a full 10% tithe. And then mm -hmm. local church budget, that's so that when I go to church, I can sit on a comfortable pew and have the heat on and lights and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's just an extension of my own lifestyle. A lot of times it's pride in our church, mm -hmm. in the appearance of our church, not mm -hmm. our church as a mission working church. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. isn't the church supposed to be a training ground? Yes. So I know yes. Sister White says something about the preacher shouldn't be preaching every Sabbath. It right. should be a training ground to where the people go out into the mission field. And do Bible studies mm -hmm. and they get and mentored into the work. Our church models really aren't modeling after the, the optimal, the way. It's not, it, they're not even set up the way it was right after Jesus' right. death mm -hmm. in the early Christian church. Exactly, yes. So. so this is the issue. This is the issue that God has. Mm -hmm. and us being involved with missions, and mm -hmm. that's why we set up Mission TV. So a lot of people don't, aren't aware of this, the very clear teaching that God has in his Bible. God says, I have an issue with this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this is how you get out of Laodicea. This is how you help as you overcome. As you start giving to people you may never meet in this lifetime. Right. You start giving to them, you start developing character like mine. Right. Mm -hmm. And look how, I mean, just look how merciful and gracious mm -hmm. God is because he's not saying, okay, go, 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 go into the foreign field to everybody. Mm -hmm. But if you can't go, send. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. If you can't go, spend. Yes. Give what you have. Yes. Give all. I don't Absolutely. think we even really think you were saying the rich young ruler. We don't really take that to heart. Right. No, we don't. No, it was just some guy. <laughs> you know, just some guy. This, that guy talked to Jesus. It doesn't apply to me. Right. Mm -hmm. See, so this is why it's got to be an individual choice. It can't, because we can't wait for the church to do it. We mm -hmm. can't even wait for anybody else to do no, it. No, it's an individual choice. Individuals got to make the choice that, you know, I, we got to do this. Mm -hmm. We just got to do it. And some people are doing it. And right, they're yeah. great examples. And you know what? If we think about overcoming Laodicea and mm -hmm. really waking up mm -hmm. and, and with the zeal going to do the work and going mm -hmm. to finish the work, mm -hmm. as we're waking up and realizing giving or surrendering everything that we have mm -hmm. to the Lord for Him to use mm -hmm. us and our resources mm -hmm. as He chooses, mm -hmm. that's what's going to fit. What did Jesus do? His entire life was surrendered to the Father to do the work of the Father. For others. For mm. others. Yes. Mm -hmm. Didn't have a place to lay his head, was always on the go, healing the sick. Right. Raising the dead. Right. Yeah. And back that's, then, those were all of the, the, the foreign missions. Right. And, that, and that's, and that's mm -hmm. the picture of being Christ-like. Because that's what Christ is like. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So um, now we're going to move to Isaiah 58. Mm. This is the other part of it. We're going we're, fast now. We're going to move. Okay. <laughs> Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Okay. Yet they see, okay, so the house of Jacob has sins and transgressions, but they seek me daily and they delight to know my ways. They have prayer calls in the morning, they study their Bible in the morning, they pray, they come to church, they do all this stuff as a nation that did, as a church that did righteousness and forsook not the teachings of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice and take delight in approaching to God. Isn't that what we do? Mm -hmm. Every Sabbath we, we come. Love we love God. We, we lit, lot, want a good sermon, mm -hmm. we go to GYC, we go to AS, we go to all these things, we watch 3ABN, we delight to, to seek after God, and we delight to have these things. And, and, they, and then they say to God, wherefore have we fasted, and, and, and they, thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no In other words, mm -hmm. God, we go to church every Saturday. We, we, we don't eat meat. We avoid the theater. You know, we, we listen to sermons, people doing sermons. I'm bored to tears, but we listen to them. How come you're not taking it? Where are you? And this is the thing, <laughs> this is the pattern I hear and the, and the echoing, repeating pattern I hear almost, almost every Sabbath is, I wish I could know how to get closer to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, you raise your hand. How many of you want to get closer to Jesus? And everybody, 
I want to get closer to Jesus. We have a phone call. Oh, Sorry. yay. Another <laughs> phone call. Don't forget where you left off. Yeah. Hello, welcome to the live. Hi. Hi, um, this is Sandra Smith. Smith. And, Hi. I was wondering. Hi, how are you? Good. <laughs> this is Natalie. Hi, Natalie. How are you? Doing well, Handel. Did you have a question? Well, uh, I want to answer the, the question about uh, Nam, uh, sorry, Lady Sian, like uh -huh. and how to overcome that. Uh, one of the things that works for me in my life is to fast and pray to read the Bible. And whenever I have the opportunity to reach out to someone to do that to the best of the ability that God has given me, um, not only do you find where people need help around me, but if I do see something, I should open my, uh, my uh, hands and see what I can to help them out. All right. Well, I find that that helps me to stop me from just sitting around and waiting, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Handel, for calling and giving us your, your um, answer. We appreciate that. <laughs> thank All you. Right. Bye -bye. God bless. Bye-bye. <laughs> so he mentioned three things. Right. He was right on, too. Yeah. yeah. So, um, okay, getting back to this, uh, take us no knowledge. So why are we doing all this stuff? And God says, is not this the fast that I've chosen to lose the balance? Not what you were talking about. Right. That you said you've done. Yeah. But this. Okay, so instead of like going to church every Sabbath and avoiding movies and avoiding meat and all that kind of stuff that we do so well, it says, loose the bands of wickedness, help other people, undo the heavy burdens, let the oppressed go free. Is it not to deal thy bread or thy money to the hungry? This is spiritually as well as physically, but mm -hmm. I'm saying physically. I think God is talking about physically help and mm -hmm. that thou bring the poor those physically poor and spiritually poor that are cast out to thy house. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that mm -hmm. thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Then yeah. shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine mm -hmm. health shall spring, spring mm -hmm. forth speedily. Yeah. The righteousness the shall go before thee. Righteousness, thy righteousness, okay? That, mm -hmm. that ties into Malachi Your, 3, yes. an offering in righteousness. Mm -hmm. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward. Thou shalt, then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Mm -hmm. And I think it's interesting because in the first part of the scripture, mm -hmm. it says a nation, as a, na as a nation mm -hmm. that, that did, did righteousness. Mm -hmm. Did righteousness. As yeah, if, it's not as if saying you were, that, that you they are. were righteous by, do. by doing the, going through the motions that uh -huh. they were. Uh -huh. It was like as if they yes. were. But this is how they actually can be. Exactly. Righteous. Exactly. Yeah, and I appreciated mm -hmm. that Handel brought that out. Mm -hmm. You know, it's our prayer time with the Lord, it's our study time with the Lord, but it's also as we help others. Mm -hmm. And it was he was right on with where we were going. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's so many ways you can look at this. Even in the sanctuary, you have the outer courtyard, which is mm -hmm. the forgiveness, and then the washing, and you go in mm -hmm. where the growth period happens. Mm -hmm. You've got the bread, which is the eating mm -hmm. the, 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 the word. You've got the altar, which is prayer, mm -hmm. and you got the candlestick, which is Sending, witnessing, mm -hmm. you giving know. out light. And uh -huh. that's that you have to go through those before you can enter the most holy place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all mm -hmm. a part of the holy place. There's it's, not one piece missing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always there, but, all of it. But mm -hmm. something else that he pointed out, which I think is very important, is it's hard to find people that need this help where he lives. Same here. It's hard to find people here that need that help. Mm -hmm. But there are people in other countries mm -hmm. that desperately need that help, you know? 16,000 kids are dying every day. Mm -hmm. Do I know any, yeah. any family where their kids are dying because there's not enough food? I don't, not here, but I, I know where they are over there. Mm -hmm. And so this is God's, God's household is the whole world. Mm -hmm. But if we're focused on survival, mm -hmm. we're not gonna go there. Mm -hmm. But if we go there and make that a priority, in our lives, that is the main ambition in our life. Mm -hmm. 
then God's promises will start to click in. Mm -hmm. And you know what? The example was of Christ and the disciples that he called as he called each one from their work field, from, uh -huh. you know, the fishermen's thing and all these different places. He didn't ask or didn't want them to bring anything, mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. They just left what they had and came. Mm -hmm. They didn't worry about how they were going to feed the rest of their family. The fr mm -hmm. They just left and followed mm -hmm. Jesus. And he said, have thou lackest anything? Right. No. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Matthew 6, 33. Right. So we don't really hear what happened to their families, but I'm sure that they were well taken care of. That I was mean. the point. They were taken <laughs> care of. He yeah. said, you lack nothing. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've been doing this for seven years, eight years now. Mm -hmm. Camp it out on Matthew 6, 33. And, and the thing <laughs> is, that's why we call for foreign missions, though, because it's in the foreign missions that you find people that are desperate mm -hmm. for help. Mm -hmm. And really nowadays, our world is so connected and so small, it only makes sense that, that this is the time that we, I mean, it's just like obvious, so yeah. easy to reach out mm -hmm. to those other parts of the world. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, With even that more same so. the same media, the same social exactly, media. Exactly, uh, more so than 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's easier for missionaries mm -hmm. to go, it's easier for yes. people to send money and to connect. So if it's so much easier, well, then why are so few people going? Exactly. Because we're too comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I mean, back then, they had to really have a zeal. They mm -hmm. had to walk. They had to take, what is it? They had to go on Boats ships and, and horses. They risk their lives. I mean, yeah, <laughs> look at some of the examples of just, I mean, Sister White, just in her day. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about the disciples back then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but now, it's so different. We have every mm -hmm. access. Yeah, but we're rich. And increased with good and have, and have need, need of nothing. And it goes back around to the and same. we have no zeal. Yeah, so but we haven't had invite, zeal. invited Christ to come in. Mm. So if we had that zeal that they had with the tools that we wow. have today, couldn't we wow. accomplish more? Exactly. We could finish the work. I mean, I can, I, go ahead. Oh, I was just thinking again. <laughs> No wonder Satan tries so hard to keep us asleep and just like in that Laodicean mm -hmm. lull because the potential for what we could do right now is just amazing. Huge. Technology, the tools everywhere. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you know what frustrates me is that, you know, you'll have that other side where, you know, we just bash and bash and bash all of this technology mm -hmm. really and, and leave it over to Satan. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. no, it's God gave resource. us the wisdom and the mm -hmm. knowledge and understanding. Mm -hmm. Don't just give it to the enemy. Take what we yes. have mm -hmm. and use it for good. Absolutely. Don't just desert it. And be zealous about it. Yes. Exactly. That's yes. what it takes. Television, exactly. radio. Okay, anyway. And we're gonna, <laughs> we want to wrap this up in this final. Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> 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 or streaming video. See? Exactly. <laughs> we want to wrap this up in this final um, quote from Ellen White, which I think is incredibly key and explains a lot of what we're doing. It is in doing Christ's work that the church has the promise of his presence. Mm. You, want the, you want Christ's presence? Do, Do his work. Mm. Okay, if you want to be one of the five wise virgins with the extra oil or the extra Holy Spirit or the extra I presence. I think you're, you're giving away next week's topic. <laughs> <laughs> she says, He's giving a sneak peek to next week's topic. She says, go teach all nations, he said, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. To take his yoke of service is the one of the first conditions of receiving his power. Could you go back to the previous one? Read that again. That in, is it is in doing Christ's work that the church has the promise of his presence. And that's so simple. The formula mm -hmm. is so straight cut. Right. Forward. And, yeah. If and we want summarize Christ's work. What is Christ's work? Christ's work, work is helping others. It's, abandoning it's Isaiah his fifty eight. All of those things we just read in Isaiah mm -hmm. fifty eight. In fact he quoted yeah, any abandoning his own culture, abandoning his own mm -hmm. home, abandoning his own comfort zone, and going cross culture, being born as a you know the story. <laughs> yeah, we, we need the to very, close. Now here. this is the this wow. is the key. This is the clincher. This is the keystone that should be like preached every single Sabbath from mm -hmm. every single pulpit. The very life of the church depends upon her faithfulness and fulfilling the, the Lord's, Lord's commission. commission. Now, are we doing that? We look at, the, remember that graph? Are we fulfilling the Lord's commission according to that graph or are we abandoning okay. it? What if someone would ask, what is the Lord's commission? The great commission. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Go, send, or disobey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. To neglect this work is surely to invite spiritual feebleness and decay. Laodicea, hmm. where there is no active labor for others, love wanes, and faith 
which is the gold. No active active labor labor. for others. Active labor for others. Personal, individual, active effort Mm. labor. Not just picking up the phone. Hey, just call and check on you. Well, that's part of it. You know. Although that can work too. Is that is that is that the is that the reason for your life? Mm. Okay. Or is it my checklist? Exactly. Is it Mm. is one of those things I slip into the corners of my life, or is that the reason for my life? Because that was the reason for Christ's life, was to reach and make that connection with people. So really, that comes down to what is my motive? Is mm. my motive, oh, I want to get to heaven, and I know mm. I need to like reach out to people. Mm. I'm going to try to call Melissa today because, <laughs> oh, I want to go to heaven. Yeah. Or am I going to be thinking, oh, I need to talk to Melissa because I think she needs some encouragement. Right. and. I want to make sure that she's in heaven too. Right. Kind of so that's love. Right. That's what right. you're talking about. Exactly. But it's not just the uh, reason or motive, but it's also what is your priority. Mm-hmm. See, is my priority to get ahead in life and tuck these nice things in the side, or is my priority to serve God by serving his fellow man? Mm-hmm. Fellow man. We're actually over time. I know. I'm sorry. Then it's I wanna, okay. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, <laughs> except it abide in the vine, no more can you except yeah, you abide, abide in, in me. me. Mm-hmm. So I we have divine. to have Christ. We have to have Christ. This is, this is what he said in the Laodicean Christ message. Christ within the hope I'm of glory. knocking. Mm-hmm. Let me in. Okay? Mm-hmm. For without me, you can, can do, do nothing. nothing. We need more Christ. Mm-hmm. But it goes back and forth. Yes. It's like as we go out and do this work, we get more Christ. Mm-hmm. Because but we, we learn Christ. more about who he is and why he's doing this mm-hmm. and how much he loves. And look mm-hmm. at the compassion it, it creates in us for others. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we don't get that by just keeping ourselves what, aloof from right. society. And mm-hmm. when, we, when we take groups overseas and they see people that are so poor, it awakens that passion, mm-hmm. that, that caringness that mm-hmm. we don't get otherwise. Mm-hmm. And that, that begets... I want to close with this John Piper statement that I just love. He is most, and this is going to be a theme of another show, but he, God, is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. So just like we see we have a problem that we're abandoning missions, and God is pointing out that we're abandoning giving, abandoning missions in our giving and in our life, Isaiah 58 What do we do? Do we go out and do these missions? Well, we do that also. But our greatest need is to get into Christ. Amen. But this is how we get into Christ. Exactly. Is by obeying, Mm -hmm. by obedience. Him, he that keepeth my word, I will come and abide with him. Mm -hmm. Right. So to put it, I know we need to close, but to put it very practically, um, what I gather Mm -hmm. is that the prescription for this illness of Laodicean Nice. <laughs> is is really that we need more Christ in us. Mm-hmm. But if there's anything that we would need to do, mm-hmm. it is just to get active. Absolutely. Um, in the reaching out to others, whether that be through giving our money um, or just going out there. Yeah, and Christ knows what we can do. Where would right. be more yeah. effect, most effective? I know for a mess absolute truth that there's more Christians here in America than there are Mm -hmm. in many countries like Thailand. Mm -hmm. There's huge mission fields Mm -hmm. that are almost totally neglected. And you know, Mm -hmm. let me just say this because it was perfect what Steffi said. Uh The biggest thing, you know, that I see with this and overcoming and and the prescription for overcoming Mm -hmm. is dying to self Mm -hmm. and surrendering self. Because when we lay ourselves open Mm -hmm. to Christ, that's open. He will come in and sup with us. Mm-hmm. But we have to let go. Surrender mm-hmm. and obedience. Surrender yeah. and obedience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, there you go, darling. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for joining us. It's been an active and enjoyable discussion, but I think we've all learned things that are challenging to us today. And I just want to encourage our viewers. You know, we offered this book today... And it's why am I a missionary? Why should you be a missionary? And he talks about some of these issues in here as well. Next week, we're going to be talking about overcoming Laodicea from a little bit, um, well, from some other texts in the scriptures. We want to look at some other verses and we want to study more about the theology that, that's there that opens up to us when we take into account what we've learned tonight about surrender and about mm. obedience and and 
I think we'll learn more from Christ mm -hmm. next week. And I just want to encourage you this week to seek the Lord with all of your heart. The scripture says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. He is near. He is knocking at your heart door and my heart door. And let's open the door and let him come in so that he can eat with us and he can share with us himself and we will have him to share with those around us because they need to know him also. Mm -hmm. They need to have that privilege and that pleasure and that joy of serving him as well, of knowing him, of supping with him, of opening their heart's door to him as well. So I just want to encourage you this week, surrender all and plead with God to show you your place in his mission field. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for the Mission TV Live, and I apologize for going a little bit over, but we will see you again next Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time.